Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman here, and I'm a solutions architect at Pure Storage, and I'm going to be talking about uh, space reclamation, um, some of the things that have been going on when it was introduced in 5.0, uh, and some of the changes in 6.0 as well. So first of all, what is space reclamation? Why do we need it? Um, why do we need to talk about this? Uh, what is the problem that it's solving? So uh, the problem with block storage, right, when you delete a file on a file system, when you uh, remove a VM, when you move a VM, right, the file system knows that. You're cleaning up the metadata of that file system, but you're not, not actually telling the underlying storage that that storage is gone, right? That storage is maintaining that capacity. So this is referred to as dead space or dirty space or stranded space. Uh, so how do, you, how do you remove that space? There's a couple different ways. Uh, you can either overwrite that space somehow with, you know, data, zeros, whatever. Uh, you can delete the underlying volume. That'll, of course, tell the array that it's gone. Um, or you can actually tell the array to reclaim that space somehow. And how do you do that? Uh, this is through unmap. Uh, unmap is a T10 SCSI command that tells the underlying array that, hey, we need to reclaim this space. This space is no longer used by the file system. Uh, so you can do what you need with it, right? Delete it, remove it, mark it to be removed, whatever. And a variety of different operating systems can do this. Windows 2012 R2 can do this by default when you delete a file, it'll issue unmap. Uh, Linux ext4 file systems and plenty others. Uh, this is allows the array to be the most efficient as possible when it comes to using its space, right? If space is not being used by the file system, it can remove it, clean it up, do what it needs. So what about VMware? When was this introduced? So VMware introduced the ability to do unmap in ESX 5.0. And it's changed a little bit over the years, so we'll talk a little bit about that history. First of all, what is the re workflow of space reclamation? So let's say we have a couple files, four 150 gig databases or something like that, sitting on a file system and sitting on a physical volume. Let's say we delete one of those, or we go and move the other one. So that space is freed up on the file system, but the underlying physical volume is still preserving that space, causing about 300 gigs in this, in this instance of dead space. So now we reclaim the space using that, the whatever uh, operating system um, implementation of unmap that they offer. Goes in there, and it tells the underlying array, hey, this space is now free, clear it up, do what you need. So now the, the file system and the underlying physical volume are in tandem. The space is reclaimed. So where does dead space occur? Uh, in a VMware environment, for instance. So two, two different places, one out of guest and one inside of the guest. So let's take an example here. So we create a virtual machine, we fill it with data, the space is being used on the file system, the space is being used on the SSD. We create another VM, same thing, file system is being used, SSD or underlying storage is being used. So if we delete that virtual machine, it cleans it up on the file system, but that underlying physical volume still thinks it's there, so there's dead space. Let's say we delete some of the data inside the VM, uh, the VMFS volume no longer uh, still sees that as being used because the VMDK is virtualizing that layer and the underlying SSD still sees that as being used, right? So dead space can build up inside the guest or outside from deleting a virtual machine. So let's go over the history of Unmap uh, and VMware. So Unmap was initially introduced in 5.0 uh, and this was an automatic procedure, right? You deleted a virtual machine, you moved a virtual machine, ESX would issue Unmap to the underlying storage and reclaim that space. This caused some problems, though. Um, there were some performance issues with the arrays that could support Unmap. Uh, it would cause overall performance issues with any I.O. going to that array. And therefore, VMware ended up disabling that and not making it an automatically automatic Unmap procedure right? and made it this option called Enable Block Delete that allowed you to turn on automated Unmap or turn it off. And then ESX 5.0 U1, they removed this automatic behavior automatically, completely. Um, instead, it's now a CLI command in VMKFS tools that allows you to run it on as necessary. Now that option still remained, that parameter enable block delete still remained, um, but it didn't do anything if you turned it on or turned it off. In ESX 5.5, they enhanced the VMKFS tools operation uh, to run the unmap inside of ES6 CLI. Uh, one of the major benefits of this, besides being some underlying architectural changes in unmap, was the fact that you could now easily use PowerCLI to script this procedure. In ESX 6, and we'll go into this in more detail towards the end, uh, they now support in-guest unmap inside of a virtual disk, not just a raw device mapping. So let's take a look at how um, Unmap with VMKFS, VMKFS tools works in 5.0 and 5.1. So we have a bunch of VMs sitting on a VMFS data store, sitting on a physical volume. We delete a whole bunch of these VMs, and so now we have a bunch of dead space on the array. So we run VMKFS tools dash Y. The number that you supply after dash Y is percentage of the free space that you want to reclaim, uh, anywhere between 1 to 99. So what this is going to do is going to take that number, and it's going to fill whatever percentage that you indicated of that VMFS with a balloon file. And then it's going to issue SCSI unmap to that balloon file to reclaim the space on the underlying storage. 
Now, the problem with it being a percentage is that you're not going to get all the space back. You're going to miss some. And the reason you weren't able to do 100% is if you had 100% of that free space filled up, you could run out of space, right? VMs would not be able to expand or grow or swap files couldn't be created. You could have some scuzzy errors, right? So they had to use smaller percentages. And usually people were even more conservative, using even more smaller than 99. Therefore, the efficiency was not great. So in 5.5 and 6.0, this has changed. So now when you delete virtual machines, you can run ESX CLI to unmap the space. And instead, you specify a block count. of By default, it's 200 megabytes, but it can be anything, right? 100 gigs, something like that. Or your vendor might have a different recommendation. So now it's iterative process. So it's going to go through the entire free space of the volume. It's going to issue in, in this case, 100 gig segments and reclaim that space. So it's going to be 100% efficient. It's always going to reclaim all that space. Once again, the benefit of this process is now you can easily um, script this through Power CLI. So in-gay space reclamation. What's going on with this? So traditionally, when you had to reclaim space, you had to do things like um, overwrite dead space with zeros, right? Issue a bunch of zeros to it, send it down to the array. Because often arrays had the ability to run some kind of uh, zero reclamation procedures on the volumes or remove contiguous zeros. Or uh, like many, many flash data reduction arrays today, when they receive zeros, they're just going to discard them immediately, right? So that was a way to reclaim the space without actually having unmapped support. And that's been done for a very long time. And people would write these zeros with things like sdelete or dd, depending on whatever operating system they were using. But of course, this was a manual process. This was not, this was not an ideal process, and it required a lot of coordination between the guest, the, the application owner, the VMware owner, and possibly even the storage admin if you had to reclaim those zeros manually. So let's look at this in 5.5 and early, in guest reclamation, how this had to be done. So we'd create a VM. Uh, we fill it with data. So there's a bunch of data in the VMDK. The VMFS is completely used or used up. Uh, and the underlying storage is used as well. So if we delete that data inside the VM, uh, what we would do is then write zeros to that pre-existing location. Those zeros would be then sent down to the array, and then you'd either reclaim those zeros with a manual procedure, or they'd be automatically reclaimed as they were written to the array. So that allows for some efficiency, but of course the VMFS is still reporting that as used, but at least the underlying physical storage uh, is cleared up. So what's been done in vSphere 6? So end-to-end -end unmap is now supported in vSphere 6 within virtual disks. Right? So if they're using ESX 6, VMware hard version 11, um, and that guest can support SCSI 2 unmap, uh, and it's a thin virtual disk, you can issue unmap automatically from the guest down to the VMware layer and have that translated um, actually down to the physical device to reclaim that space. So, and if you remember, I mentioned that enable block delete parameter earlier. That was the option that initially allowed automatic unmap, and it just persisted even though it didn't do anything through many versions. Well, the reason for is that they were planning this, right? So they, were, they wanted to reuse this option for this automatic unmap. And I'll tell you exactly what this parameter does in a second when we walk through the workflow. So let's say we create a VM, we fill it with data like we did before. Instead, we delete this data now, but the guest can actually issue unmap. So what's going to happen when the guest issues unmap is that it's going to reclaim that space on the VMFS, so that VMDK is going to shrink and then the underlying storage is going to be reclaimed as well, automatically by ESX. If that enable block delete was not enabled, which is not enabled by default, it's going to stop right here. And that, that space is going to still be dead on the array, but then you can run the traditional ESX CLN map and things like that to remove it. <clears throat> so what about virtual volumes and unmap? Uh, so many of the problems with unmap are going to go away with the idea of virtual volumes, because now each volume is an individual file on the array. So when that file is deleted, when that volume is deleted, the array knows about it, so it can reclaim that space. So the idea of out of guest unmap is not much of an issue today with vVols. So let's say we create a virtual machine. When you create a virtual machine, it automatically is going to create the config vVol and a data vVol, uh, or more data vVols, depending on how many VMDKs are provisioned. Uh, when you power on that VM, it's going to create the swap vVol. Uh, if you create another VMDK, it's going to create another data vVol. Right? So if you were to go to delete that VMDK, it's going to remove that data vVol from the array. Uh, if you power that VM off, it's going to delete that swap vVol from the array. And then if you delete the virtual machine, it's going to delete those volumes from the array. So you no longer have to worry about out of guest unmap when moving or deleting virtual machines that are based on virtual volumes. So if you want to find more information about VMware and pure storage, please check out my blog and things like that. Um, but I just wanted to get a quick overview of how unmap works in vSurf 6 and 5.5, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs>